Good morning and welcome to the third and last in this series of artist inspired printmaking sessions with me Rachel from I Printed That. So far we've looked at uh, screen printing and pop art with Andy Warhol. We've explored pattern design with William Morris, both of which you can still see um, on the Virtual Ritual Facebook page. They're still av available to watch for you. Um, but in today's session, we are going to be creating monoprints with Matisse. So all the equipment and materials are in the video notes just above. Um, and while you, while you get those ready, I just want to answer a couple of questions that you may have. So firstly, what is a monoprint, also known as a monotype, and who was Henri Matisse? So first of all, that word monotype. Mono meaning one, and type meaning to print. So we get a one-off, unique print with no repeatable aspects whatsoever. They're normally made by inking up a smooth plate, scratching into it, and then taking a transfer on a piece of paper. So nice and simple, you'll be glad to know. That's, that's how you create a monoprint, really. Uh, the second question, who was Henri Matisse? So he was a French paint, painter and sculptor, born in Northern France in 1869. Now, initially, he worked as a legal clerk and he studied law, but during a bout of illness, he took up painting. So smitten with it, he decided to become an artist. And he's well known for his colourful paintings, his sculptures, his sculptures um, and also his large, vibrant collages. Um, some of those collages we're going to have just have a take a look at now. So there, so some of these are sort of smaller. They're taken from a book that he created called Jazz based on um, circus life. So you can see that they're really vibrant and bold. Now we could say that his, so thank you very much for the picture, Victoria. We could say that his collages and his paintings kind of bookended his life. But during his uh, late forties, he created a series of 69 monotypes, which we're gonna have a look at now. These are effortlessly fluid. And when I look at them, I get a really calming feeling from them. So we're just gonna have a look at one of those monotypes now um, that shows a picture of a face. He used different subjects for this, so lots of faces. He also used just still life, so fruit in a bowl, um, right through to um, the natural world. And it's these monotypes and the collages that we're gonna to fuse together to create some of our prints. So thank you very much for that image as well, Victoria. So just quickly run through how the session's gonna to work today. We're gonna to start with a couple of warm up exercises just to get us used to that print printmaking technique. Um, I'm gonna show you two different types of ways to make mono prints. And then at the end, we are gonna do that fusion of collage, color and printmaking te um, techniques, tie them all together and end up with our final piece. Now we kind of need to start at the end because we want to make up our collage so that it, uh, we give it time to dry before we do our final print. So if you're ready, um, please get together your uh, card or cartridge paper that you're going to be printing onto, your coloured paper, your scissors and also your glue. Now when Henri Matisse cut out his collage and, and there's a great uh, video on YouTube which I will put in the comments for you. He would use a massive pair of scissors, much bigger like this, much bigger than this, like big tailor scissors. And he would hold his paper upright. The paper would be pre-painted. It was always painted paper he used. And then he would just cut into it. He didn't draw any shapes on it, he just cut right into it. So that's what I'm going to want you to, I want you to do now. So thinking of some of those uh, natural shapes uh, that he used and those bold silhouettes, um, I'm just going to cut some colour. And he often described it as cutting through colour or flying with scissors. So I need to keep it nice and upright like Matisse did. 
if you can see that and I'm just cutting various shapes okay so that's the first one another one I'm kind of like a leaf shape just a single leaf And it's quite useful as well to use some of these negative spaces. I'm just going to go in and cut around them because they create their own interesting shapes. So I'm going to do some more pink and I've also got some green paint and paper here as well. So I'm going to keep it nice and zesty and summery and vibrant. Now you could have also work if you want to some shapes that you're familiar with. So let's add in some circles, some more kind of geometric shapes. And then I'm going to start in on my green paper. So again, you're holding it nice and upright. It's funny, we, we quite, every time I do it, I kind of want to sort of keep down, but we need to, if we do it like Matisse did, you do get a real sense of the shapes, I think. So I've got my concentrating face and so my tongue might start hanging out in a minute. Finish that one off here. There we go, there's a green leaf shape. And I'll just do a couple more and I'll just bring in some of this uh, blue sort of turquoise colour. But it's very freeing, I find. It's you're not really thinking about the sort of detail. You're just enjoying where those scissors take you. And I quite like that shape that's, that's come. So I'm going to make that into just round off the edges a bit. And maybe follow that line of the paper. Okay, so I've got all my cutouts done. Hopefully you have two. So what I'm going to do now is pop you down um, so we can carry on with the session. So it's just a case now of gluing all your pieces of paper on. Just arrange them so that you've a good composition. Think about these negative spaces as well as the actual cutouts themselves. That's something that we're going to talk about a little bit later on as well when we do one of our prints. And some of Matisse's collages were absolutely huge and they would cover floor to ceiling on the wall and he would have an assistant pin them up for him because it was only later in life when he got into his collage I'm just going to make some of these a bit smaller actually um, because he had a bout of stomach cancer and was confined to a wheelchair being unable to paint or sculpt um, sort of in that position he took up collage and I think I guess that's one reason why he would cut with his arms straight out anyway so he would have an assistant and she would be climbing on ladders and would um be pinning up all this collage so he'd pin it first of all rather than than stick it they'd always be pinned um, i think i just need so a little bit of green in here so i'm just gonna take one of those shapes nod it in 
don't be frightened to let your shapes overlap you know they create interesting negative spaces as well Let's see what that one looks like on that Okay, so I'm happy with that, so I'm going to stick it down now. Just find a scrap piece of paper. remembering where they all went <laughs> and taking them off make sure you go right up to the edges with the glue because when we print we don't want them falling off And it's nice just to play with colour and with shapes. I think as adults we sort of lose that playing aspect that we had when we were children. So it's nice to sort of go back to childhood and we're just, there's no pressure, we're just cutting and pasting. I think that one, Where did that one go? I can't remember now. Let's pop it there. Add a few just to balance the composition and those negative spaces. Okay, make sure they're all stuck down. Okay, so we're finished with our glue and our scissors. 
and we just need to put that to one side to dry whilst we um, practice our printing, have a go at a couple of techniques and then we'll come back to that for the final one. So just for our um, exercises, our warm up exercises, I want you to take your piece of Perspex and your block printing ink or lino cut ink and apply about, an, I would say an olive size dollop, that's a technical term, onto the printing plate. And using your roller, just roll backwards and forwards, left and right. And you'll notice that the, the sound changes, it becomes sort of a little bit more dense. And also what we wanna do is get rid of all these ripples as well. So we want a nice solid um, covering. So you don't need to press really hard. You're just supporting the roller. So we don't need to make it much bigger than our piece of paper that we're going to be printing onto. And then we're going to start by using a pencil. So make sure it's not um, very sharp. We want a nice sort of blunt end really, because we're gonna be making marks into this. So all I want you to do is just draw a series of marks. Whoops. And you might just want to have next to you, which I did mine, just a piece of tissue, just to take off any ink so you can really make scratches into this. So we just want straight marks, some zigzags. Take the whole bit out, some dashes. Literally just making marks in the ink. And then when you've done that, take your scrap piece of paper, lay it on the top, and then using your fingers, we're going to go all over the back of the paper, making contact with the ink. So I would suggest you do it in sort of a methodical way to make sure you don't miss any bits out. So start from the top, going left to right, right to left. all over. I'm just going to go once more all over just to make sure. And then if you carefully peel the paper away, you'll see that all those scratches, those marks that you've made now appear in our paper. So it's a nice easy technique that one. So it's very similar to the uh, monotype face that we looked at of Matisse's. So that's how, how we're gonna make our first one. So the next um, type of mono print I'm gonna show you Uh, uses the same ink but we want it really really thin so roll it out a little bit more and I always find with this technique it's a little bit like a pancake the first one isn't always as good, but it's the second one that is. So with this one, just take your paper and just place it on. Don't press it down, just very carefully place it on without touching it. And what we're gonna be doing is drawing on the back. So what I normally do is just hold it down with something. So you could actually just use your scissors again just to hold the paper down. 
it's not really going to move but i think there's something psychological about having a piece of having your hand on a piece of paper while you're drawing that he helps you go a bit steadier because you don't want your hand to be smudging here because it will create lots of smudges and again same thing we're just going to make some marks so it's not it doesn't feel as easy i'll be honest because you do want to kind of put your fingers on to to draw to steady your hand but we're just looking for some nice fluid lines and then carefully peel the paper again and then that's how we make that sort of print so you'll see that it's picked up a lot of this but if i was to go in again um, it wouldn't pick, there wouldn't be so much ink left on the plate so we'd get an even better print so i'll just quickly show you that one i've just got a Piece of paper handy. I think I might just use. I'll just use this one. So you get a slightly better print with less of this sort of noise that we call it noise, sort of in printmaking terms. Okay, so those are the two techniques that we're going to be using this morning. So let's start um, with that first technique. So where we, we need to ink up our plate. So same amount of ink. Roll it backwards and forwards, left and right. Make a good even coating. And we're going to show you a picture now. So we're going to look again at the face with the black background and the white line image. And what we're going to be doing is just copying that so we can get a real sense of Matisse's lines and the rhythm that he used. So we're just going to look at that picture now. While that's coming up, you can lay your paper on top. No, nope, don't lay your paper. No, nope, because we're scratching into it. Sorry. <laughs> Okay, so we don't seem to have the picture at the moment, but what I will do if I scoot, oh no, um, could we have the other one up please? Sorry, the um, the face again. Thanks Victoria. Oh, perfect. That's it. Apologies if it was already there. I can't see my, my um, screen very well. Great. Yes, I can see it now. So there's the face and what we're going to do is just um, copy that using the same fluid lines and mark making that we did on the first exercise. Um, now, what I would just say at this point is anything that goes on here will be in reverse. So it doesn't really matter for this sort of technique, but if you're looking to use text, then you need to make sure that whatever goes on here is the reverse. So let's just start. So you just got these lines for the hair. Again, I'm using my pencil uh, that's nice and blunt and just taking off the ink as I need to. It doesn't have to be, you know, a total um, accurate portrayal of the picture. We're just using it as a sort of a guide, really. I just want to put the brow in. Okay, 
Now I'm not very good at drawing noses so I'm going to apologise to this lady in advance. So take your paper on top of the image and if you remember we now just go over the back I'm just going to check it as we draw it out just make sure to see if it needs any more so it needs just a little bit more You could use the back of a spoon as well if you find your it hurts your fingers, back of a wooden spoon. That works really well. You could use another roller. Um. So there we have our first monotype or a monoprint inspired by Matisse. Uh, then we can go on to the next exercise that we tried. So again, we're just going to use the roller just to smooth that thing out again. And if you remember, this is where we place the paper on the ink and then drew into it. Make sure it's very thin. Um, and if you want, you can just take a piece of paper, you know, it's like I said, like the pancake. So pop that on top just to sort of get rid of most of that. And while you're doing that, we're going to look at the next picture, which is, it's actually not a monotype print. I'm going to full transparency here. Uh, the next picture is called The Plane Tree, and it was done by Matisse in 1951. And it's actually um, a serigraph or a, a screen print. But it's a really good example that we can use for our next print making. Sort of for our next type. Okay, so we're just waiting for that tree, picture of the tree to come up. Thank you very much. So lay, because this is, I'm just going to get my spoon as well. I'm going to do a landscape tree. So you might want to hold, again, your paper with your pair of scissors. And with the other one as well, anything that you put on here is in reverse. So again, if you're doing text, then make sure you put the text in reverse, but it's fine for just for what we're doing today. So just very, very quickly, we're just going to draw these branches in. Again, lovely fluid lines. Okay. 
There's the roots and the trunk. And then just put all the leaves in. That's right down there a bit further. Some of these leaves aren't even touching the branches. That's how sort of quick you must have been drawing. Again, we're just using it as a guide. You don't need to make sure you've got the right amount of leaves on each branch. Just really using it as a guide for a, a fluid print. So just take a look back, back at it, make sure you're happy, and then you can pull the paper off to reveal your print. Okay, so how did you find that? Um, I've just found ink up my arm. <laughs> so hopefully you're as messy as me because it means you're having fun. Great stuff. Thank you very much, Victoria, for the photo, for the picture. So remember the collage that we made a few exercises ago. Well, we're going to use that again now for our final print. And I'm going to leave it up to you whether you wanted to use this technique where you ink up the plate, scratch into it with your pencil and then take a print. Or we can use this, this technique where you use a very small amount of ink make sure it's very thin, put the paper on top and then draw on it. So I'm going to let you decide which technique you, you preferred um, and the final print's going to be made on this. So just bear that in mind. And I would use something that's just around you. So maybe you've got a nice plant, maybe you just look over and you've got some ornaments, maybe a lamp um, and just draw those shapes. Again, we're looking at shapes, we're not looking at lots of detail. So we've had a look at how Matisse used um, just lines to create um, his drawings, his prints. Um, so we're going to do the same now. So I'm actually going to use uh, this technique. And in front of me, I've just got a bowl um, and a plant and a vase. So I'm just going to make sure this is really nice and thin. So you can still life, maybe you've got a photo um, that you quite like, maybe a landscape. You could use that. If you're watching, if you're watching again, you can pause this, maybe go and just set up some still life or just draw something from memory. Okay going to thin that out a little bit more. Now, which way do I want this? So I think I want it that way up. So I'm going to place very carefully down there. And then I'm just going to draw 
my bowl. Again, very just fluid lines. Draw my vase. The great thing is you can't see my setup, so you don't know if I'm accurate or not. <laughs> Let's just say I am. And you might want to add, especially if you're doing this um, type of print, you might want to just colour in some of those overlapping bits. Just to give a little bit more interest. So we're going to have some more solid shapes to contrast our bright coloured collage. I'm very hard not to rub my hand. It does take a bit of practice. Okay, so let's see what what that looks like then. Here we go, there's a Matisse inspired collage and mono print fusion. <laughs> So I hope you've had fun doing that today, just experimenting and playing around with collage and also mono, two monotype techniques. Now, I think um, if you look into the life of Henri Matisse, I think he's a really good example for us all because during his life, when he had um, his illnesses, he always kept creativity um, at the forefront. When he was diagnosed with cancer and confined to his wheelchair um, and couldn't paint, as I said earlier, he still wanted to be creative, but he just decided to do it a bit, a bit differently, something that he'd never really done before. And he's also credited as being one of the first artists to use collage um, as um, an artistic technique. So I think it's a really good lesson to all of us um, that, you know, if you can't do something one way, try and do it another. So thank you so much for watching today. And um, I hope you've enjoyed the three um, in this series of artist-inspired printmaking workshops and I hope to see you again very soon. Take care. Bye.